decided to work on mounting this country way 15 gallon boomless chemical sprayer on my John Deere SDX38. This is the sprayer and I decided on this one because it had a boomless setup for broadcast spraying. I was going to mount it on my four-wheeler and drive around behind that, but it tends to go pretty fast and I'm afraid that the tires would tear up the yard. So what I'm going to do is this little guy right here, I'm going to try to make some brackets to mount it on the back of this and then hook it up to the battery permanently or through the plug and be able to go slow and not tear up the yard. I'm going to start by taking off this bracket right here because that will give me a pretty flat surface to work with. Then I take some measurements at the sprayer behind it and make some brackets, hopefully some that will come off easily so I don't have to leave it on all the time. Well that proved to be a challenge but I got it off okay and I put one of the bolts back in for the shift linkage or the hydro unit. I did discover that this is, looks like where you check the hydro oil so that's a that's a plus. I put the sprayer onto 12 inch long 6 by 6s just to see how it would look. It seems like I'm going to have to make it about twice as high because of the boom is not adjustable in angle. Although there is that piece on the end. But since I don't know what the spray pattern looks like, I think I'll make try to make it about 24 inches high because it's meant for a ATV or a side-by-side -side and they're a lot taller than 12 inches in the back. So let's see what I can come up with. I'm going to tap this mounting bracket for a 5 eight or a 5 sixteenths 18 bolt to go through the back of the tractor and, to, and screw into this thing. Hopefully that'll make it easier to uh, get on and off the tractor when I'm not using it. There's the three holes I'm going to put the mounting bracket into the, onto the tractor with. I circled them with the marker just so they'd be easier to see. Now that I got the center bolt in, I can measure from this tongue and get an equal number. And I think it'll be nice and level. <clears throat> Looks like six and a sixteenth. And six and a sixteenth so what I think I'm going to do is add this clamp the bolt is already tight but it should help it from not moving now I can come from the inside transfer the holes then I can drill it out for the five sixteenths nuts and bolts Here's my progress so far. I got the bracket done, mounted to the tractor, and I got two angles coming out at an angle. Now I gotta proceed to lay out where I want it to bend, bend it horizontal, and go from there.
Here's the verse side bent horizontal. I laid out a plumb line on the diagonal angle iron and then I went a square line from that and it looks like that came out pretty good. This is the width of the grinding wheel or the cutoff wheel and as you can see it's fairly level right now. So that gets me to a good point where I can transfer that line to the other one and make it square in the back. Here's the second side notched and cut and bent. I took a framing square and squared across from the first cut to lay out the lines. Then I cut them out and bent them down and put a level across both of them and bent the second one level to the first. Assuming the garage floor is level, everything should be good. With both sides bent, I laid a one by eight on there on the brackets so I could estimate where to cut off the rear excess. It's a little lower than it sits on the ATV. I think what I'm going to do is just proceed with it at that level and uh, make the bracing and mount the board and try it out before I go any further. For my next step, I have some one inch angle that fits inside the inch and a quarter, inch and a half angle really well. I cut some pieces, pieces 13 and a half inches, which was the distance down here. So I'm gonna to try to make the bars parallel. I squared up the first angle to this uh, uh, support. Now I'm going to go ahead and tack it in and then put the second one in. Here's the progress so far. I got the two cross braces in that are squared up to this support on this side. Uh, it's bent at eight inches long. I have a one by 10 oak, rough sawn oak that I'm gonna put on top of it and overhang it by an inch on each side. Then drill some holes through and that'll be the shelf for the sprayer. The only thing I really have yet to do is I need to make a brace. From that hitch up to this because it's still a little bouncy and I think it's mostly because of the, the way I mounted it. It didn't turn out like I hoped. So I don't want to break that. Plus that'll add strength to this inch and a half by 3 16 3 angle. So far, pretty good. I'm pleased with it. I've got the center support brace welded in. I'm gonna weld it on the back side just to make sure it doesn't break off. I've got all the fab work done on the sprayer attachment for the little John Deere. Took it off and welded it up real good. Here it is after the first coat of paint. I used the brush on paint. Spray paint would have done a better job and maybe only needed one coat, but it's a lot more expensive and uh, this takes time, but it protects it from the weather. I got the sprayer stand all welded up, painted and mounted. All I have to do now is drill four holes for the board to put the sprayer on and I can strap it on and test it out. Here's the finished product. It's a one by 10 rough sawn oak. And I sawed it off at 32 inches, drilled four holes through into the supports and uh, bolted it on with three eighths inch bolts. So the next thing is to uh, strap the 
sprayer on and see how it fits. Well, here it is all done, strapped on with the supplied straps. I'm gonna give it a test now. I'll be riding around the yard spraying Here it is working. I'm not really sure if you can see how wide it spreads, but I'd say it's a good, it's advertised at 16 feet, and I bet it's every bit of it, and it's pretty consistent. So I'm pretty happy with it. It seems to work pretty good.